So once you have done this, okay, you have considered the correlation function, then you can check for crossing symmetry. and modular invariance. Now, if we pass these tests, this implies that we have a good CFT. But a good CFT does not necessarily mean that we have a good string theory, but not necessarily a good string theory. Because it could have the same problems that the bosonic string theory had, for example. Okay. So you have to then check for various other consistencies. So check for the absence of tachyons. then absence of vacuum instability and so on. Okay, and here you can just basically use the QFT techniques to analyze all these questions. Okay. And after doing that, what one finds, okay, so the result that one finds, that there are only two consistent string theory. In D equal to 10, of course, you can compactify. Okay, you wrap up the extra dimensions onto small spaces. Okay, but in 10 dimensions, you have two consistent string theories. Okay, and these are the type 2 and type 2B string theory that we described. Now, yesterday I introduced the Ramon sector, but I didn't discuss very much how to calculate the correlation function in the Ramon sector. Let me just do that right now. Okay. So, correlation functions in the Ramon sector can, in principle, be found using the Bojanization rules. Okay, so let me remind you that uh, we got this S alpha as e to the i by 2 and then plus minus phi 1 to plus minus phi 5. Okay, so the Chiral ones had even number of minus sense, anti-chiral ones had odd number of minus sense. Okay. So using this representation, we can in principle calculate the correlation functions of S alpha. Okay. But uh, doing that, it is is a, a little hard because you have to keep track of the signs, etc., carefully. Okay. So in practice, we can just specify a few OP, okay, which you can compute from first principle, and then everything else can be derived from those OPs. Okay, so in practice. They can be computed by a few OPs, which I'll write down. Few operator for expansion, and then, of course, analyticity. So, what are these operator for expansion? So, let me write these down. And as I said, these can be derived. <laughs> using these bosonization rules, but we'll just think of them as given. Okay. 
Okay. Now, if we remember the GSO uh, projection rules, you see that this is GSO even. Okay. But this is GSO odd. Okay. You have a signal psi mu. Okay. So you expect the product to be GSO odd. And indeed, this is GSO odd because this is anti chiral spinner instead of chiral spinner. Then you have. Okay, again here, this is yes or this is yes or but this is yes even. And then you have the product of two of the spin fields. This fixes the normalization of the spin field. This last one, in fact, you can derive from the others, but let me write it down anyway. Is it useful? And similar for anti holomorphic, plus the corresponding OP is in the anti holomorphic sector. And the point is that once you use this and use the fact that this is holomorphic, these are analytic in W, okay, del W bar of this is zero, okay, then you can essentially derive all other correlation functions from here. Okay, are there questions? Okay, I'll, I'll explain what these gamma mu's are, I'll de describe them. Okay. But are there any questions about these um, um, upper output expansions? Okay, so let me just say what the gamma mu's are. Okay. So these gamma mu's, these are 16 by 16 gamma matrices, symmetric matrices. Is anti commutator. Okay, so this is the identity matrix. Okay, this is probably familiar. Okay, these are 10 dimensional gamma matrices. Okay. The only subtle point that you have to remember is that in the product of two gamma matrices, of two gamma mu's. Upper index, upper spinner index is contracted with lower spinner index. Okay. So, for example, when you talk about gamma mu, gamma nu alpha, beta, okay. this actually stands for gamma mu, alpha, gamma, gamma, nu, gamma, beta. Okay, so that upper index and lower indices are contracted. Okay. And I'll leave as an exercise based on all these identities is to check that to the minus five by two, S alpha and to the minus three pi three five by two S alpha. These are both GSU even. Okay. 
these have conformoids. Zero one. Since we have given the energy momentum tensor in terms of psi mu, and we have the operator expansion of psi mu of S alpha, you can easily work this out and check what the conformal weights are. Okay. So this is the underlying conformal field theory. Okay. But now, while try, trying to construct a string theory, okay, we have to put restrictions on the states. Because as we had seen, not every state in the conformal field theory need to be states in the string theory, even off shell. Okay. So let me now say what is the general off shell state in string theory. So off shell state. So these are GSO even states. V in the CFT, okay, which satisfy several conditions. First is what we have already seen in the bosonic string theory, that L naught minus on V Okay, and let me remind you L naught plus minus is L zero plus minus L zero bar. B zero plus minus is B zero plus minus B zero. So this was the only constant we have on in bosonic string theory, okay, for off shell states. Okay. But here I'll put we'll put more constraints, okay, and that's the constraint on the picture number. So an off shell string state will have picture number minus one in the NS sector and minus half in R sector. And this should hold both in holomorphic and anti-holomorphic sector. So this is a general off shell state. Now I describe physical state or on shell state. So it satisfies all these conditions, but furthermore, it is BRST invariant. Okay, so this is again the same as in the case of bosonic string theory. Okay. And as in the case of bosonic string theory, we have an equivalence relation. Okay. That means that V and V tilde are equivalent if V tilde minus V is given by QB lambda. So for any is for some lambda that satisfies the same condition B0 minus on lambda equal to zero. L0 minus on lambda equal to 0. Okay. This condition on the picture number, you don't have to specify separately because if V tilde and V satisfy the right picture number condition, then so does lambda because QB has no picture number. Okay, so the picture number of lambda is automatically satisfied once V tilde and V satisfy the correct picture number condition. So what I'm going to describe now are some examples of physical states. So here is an example, okay, NS NS sector. This is an exercise, exercise, check 
that the following state is physical. So to check this, you have to first make sure that it has a correct picture number. It does because it's minus one, minus one. Okay. You have to make sure that it has the correct, uh, it satisfies the L0 minus and B0 minus equal to zero conditions, okay, which again you can check. Okay. And then you have to check that the QB annihilates this. Okay. And that actually puts some additional constraint on yeah. zeta and K. Okay. And the constraints are that K square should be zero. And that k mu zeta mu nu equal to zero equal to k nu zeta mu nu. Okay, so this is an exercise that you can try to do. Okay, I have given the expression for QB. So you have to check that QB actually annihilates this state. A shock. Uh, yes. Do you also put a constraint on the total Gauss number of the physical state? Well, you can, but in this case, you don't need to. At least at a generic momentum, you don't need to. Okay. But otherwise, you can put a constraint on total Gauss number two. Maybe I can write this down. In the bosonic string theory, we did it. Okay. Here also, you can do that. But uh, it's not essential, at least not in a generic momentum. You can put total Gauss number two. Sorry, this is part of the physical state condition, not optional string state. So here I can put total goes number two. Okay, which of course this state does have. Okay, so now, and okay, this one you can identify as the graviton dilaton two form fields. Okay, so this is in exact analogy with the boson string case. Okay, we have the, because it's the symmetric part, symmetric traceless part gives a graviton, the trace part gives a dilaton, and the anti-symmetric part gives a two-point two field. Okay, and just like in the case of uh, uh, bosonic string theory, there is an equivalence lesson which gave the gauge transformation dots. Okay, you can uh, uh, check that here also we have similar equivalence relation that tells us that certain, <laughs> that, that uh, this uh, zeta mu nu has to be identified. Okay, so zeta mu nu, is equivalent to zeta mu nu plus k mu xi nu plus k nu xi mu with k dot xi equal to zero. Okay, this you can interpret as gauge transformation. Right, this is xi bar. k dot xi equal to zero and k dot xi bar. Okay. The second exercise I'll give you is to check the absence of tachyons. Okay. For example, in the case of bosonic string theory, we had this state C C bar e to the i k dot x of zero on the vacuum. Okay. 
this one is not there is not present since it has picture number 0 0 okay whereas the uh, string state should have picture number minus 1 minus 1 in the nebu sort nebu sort sector okay so that's why this is not present okay. but you should you have to uh, work a little carefully and check that uh, all the low line states okay by shifting through all the low line states you will find that none of them are tachyonic okay now let's construct a state in the nsr sector a physical state in the nsr sector Okay, so this means it's a uh, uh, Nebu source on the anti holomorphic side and the Ramon on the holomorphic side. Okay. And here it is. This has the correct picture number. You can see the picture number minus half and minus one. It has a correct gross number. It satisfies GSO because this is GSO even and it will be minus phi bar psi bar mu is GSO even. And then we have to put also, we have to check the QB called the BRSC condition. Okay. And that gives condition on uh, K and Xi. Okay. So in particular, we have K square equal to zero. Okay. And then you have K mu Xi alpha mu equal to zero. Okay. And then K nu gamma nu alpha beta Xi mu beta equal to zero. So this I'll leave as an exercise. Okay. So this comes from QB V equal to zero condition. Okay. So this one, if you examine carefully, you see that it has a vector index and the spinner index. Okay. By examining the spectrum carefully, one find that this has a spin three half and spin half state. So the spin three half, massless spin three half, you can identify as the gravity law. This one you can identify, think of as a gauge condition. This you can see, you can interpret this as a yeah. some version of the right Schwanger equation in an appropriate gauge. Sorry, I think I something is wrong. I think this is this is not correct. This is new. So this you can think of as some version of the radita Schwanger equation in this gauge. Okay. So this is gravity no plus the delete no, okay, which is a super partner of the delete on. Okay. So that's the interpretation of these states. Okay. But in this case, there is another gravity no, another. set of massless spin three half plus spin half state. But this time from the RNS sector, from the RNS sector, where the anti-holomorphic side is Ramon and holomorphic side is Ramon Swartz. Okay. And this has the same chirality. In 2B, because 
the GSO projection rules are the same into a, uh, on the on the two sides and in two B, okay. and this has the opposite chirality compared to the NSR sector into A. Okay. So this is of course only at the level of the spectrum. Okay. One can also uh, check consistency at the level of the interactions. Okay. Of, for example, decoupling of pure gauge states and so on. Okay. And at the end, what one finds okay, is that these theories describe n equal to two supersymmetric theories in D equal to 10. Okay, which are nothing but type 2B or type 2A supergravity coupled to an infinite tower of mass six states. Well, all string theories have this property that you have an infinite tower of massive states. Okay. But unlike these theories, type 2B and type 2A super gravity in 10 dimension, okay, these are string theories. And as a result, okay, there are no ultraviolet divergences. Okay, and this is what, the, what we achieve okay, by including this infinite tower of massive states that are implied by string. Okay. And the absence of ultraviolet divergence will follow the basically the same line of argument as in the case of bosonic extremes. Okay. Are there questions? Okay, now let me say a few words about the heterotic string theory. So that's also important okay. so in the heterotic string theory is a mixture of super strings and bosonic string okay. in the sense that the holomorphic sector is like super string And the anti holomorphic sector is like boson extreme. Okay. Which basically means that there are no beta bar, gamma bar, okay. or equivalently, xi bar, eta bar, phi bar. Okay. And there are also no psi bar. But this raises the question as to what about D? Okay, that is the number of X means. Because this certainly cannot be 10 and 26 at the same time. So what one does in this case is that we take 10 x mu okay so x0 to x9 and then we add a CFT of central charge sixteen zero. So that effectively, if we look at the T bar X plus T bar CFT, okay, this has 
सेंट्रल चार्ज C bar equal to twenty six because ten comes from the T bar X and then uh, sixteen comes from T bar C F T, and then everything else becomes consistent. So this is essentially what underlies the construction of the hydraulic string. Are there questions? Now it turns out that CFTs of central charge sixteen zero. These are holomorphic or anti-holomorphic CFTs. Okay, are quite rare, quite restrictive. And in effect, we only have two CFTs consistent with crossing symmetry. And modular invariants. Let me remind you: crossing symmetry is the symmetry of the four-point function, and modular invariance is the symmetry of the torus one-point function. Okay, and once these are satisfied, then we have a consistent CFT. Okay. So these two CFTs give rise to what is called E8 cross E8 heterotic. And is with thirty-two heterotic theory. Okay. Now these names, okay, I'll explain what these names come from. Okay, they essentially come from the fact that the CFTs, both the CFT, have dimension. One zero currents. Okay, these are operators. Okay, currents by definition dimension one zero or dimension zero one operators are called currents. Satisfying the following relation. Okay. Where these are the structure constants of either E8 cross E8 or S2. Okay. Both of these have 496 generators. Okay. So the number of J variants are the same. Okay. But their upper output expansion differs. Okay, in the sense that the, these FABCs are different for E8 cross E8 and S32. Okay. Now, what this means is the following: okay. Given the existence of such operators, we can construct physical yeah. vortex operators, like the, the yeah. Uh, yeah, the physical string states as follows. We write it. These are primary, as you already said. said. Okay. So this you can easily con convince yourself this is physical if physical 
if k square is zero and k mu psi mu a equal to zero. Okay, so this basically tells us that there are massless gauge fields. So the eight cross eight hydronic string theory has uh, gauge fields transforming in the eight cross eight representation. Sorry, the adjoint representation of eight cross eight, and this one has gauge fields transforming in the adjoint representation of S thirty two. These are adjoint representation indices, right? A and B, because this comes in the structure constant. So physically, what this th theory is described to so heterotic string theory describes n equal to one supergravity. In D equal to ten, coupled to eight cross eight, or S with order two Young Mills, the super Young Mills, and of course, infinite tower of massive states. Now the reason that this has n equal to one super um, symmetry is because you have only one set of gravity laws, right? Because there is only the NSR but no RNs. Because on the uh, on the left sector, the anti-holomorphic sector is bosonic string theory. Okay, so there is no distinction between NS and R. So we can discuss actually heterotic and type two string theory on the uh, exactly in the same way. Okay. But what you are going to do from now on is that for simplicity, we'll focus on heterotic string theory. Okay. And essentially, because this involves less writing. Okay. It has only two sectors. N S and R. Okay, this is characterized by right moving modes okay. instead of four. Okay. But whatever you are going to discuss will the generalization to two B is to type two is straightforward. Okay, you can repeat what you are doing here for type two without uh, much change. I have a question. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, why are the currents primaries? Is it the same reason why the stress tensor is a primary? No, it just so happens that in these CFTs, you find that these the CFTs are fixed, right? Because as I said, the a requirement of crossing symmetry and modular invariance fixes the CFTs, okay. and you find that in that CFT you do have dimension one zero primaries with this property. I see. I see. Okay. Is that clear? Yeah. See, because. Yeah. Go ahead, please. I just thought in resume of it in a CFTs the currents are not primaries, so I was confused. Oh no! See, these are Virasoro primaries. Oh, I see. Okay. Not in Vesuvio, it involves the currents are not primaries under the current algebra. Yes, that's. But here you are talking about just Virasoro primary operators. 
I can write this down explicitly. These are Virasura primaries because that's what is relevant for the string theory analysis, right? The fact that they are secondary of the current algebra doesn't really make any difference. Yes, thank you. Any other question? Okay, so now let me go back a little bit okay, and consider the following um, problem that instead of string theory, let us analyze the CFT a bit more. Okay, which means that you do, for now you don't restrict yourself to the kind of additional conditions that we imposed. Okay, eventually of course for strength theory you have to impose those conditions, but let's just study the CFT a bit more. Okay, because it will give us some insight. Okay. So the question that we will study is that how to build states build states with picture number Q. Okay, that suppose you want to build all possible states with picture number Q, how do you go about doing that? Okay. So the way to do this, here at least one way to do this is the following. So you begin with a particular state of a given pic of picture number q, okay, which is e to the e to the q phi to the i k dot x acting on the vacuum. Okay, the whole thing evaluated at zero acting on the vacuum. Okay. And then we apply the various uh, modes of various uh, fields, namely beta n, gamma n, we are doing heterotic okay. so that there's a beta bar and gamma bar etc bn cn b bar n c bar n and matter operators okay. <coughs> and it's guaranteed that these will all give picture number q state because these are picture number singlet okay they have to be they carry zero picture number okay. so that's the way you build a full set of basis states of picture number Q. Now let's recall the definitions of beta n and gamma n, and those came from the mode expansion. And this minus three half basically reflects the fact that beta z has conformable at three half or zero three half. And the half reflects that gamma has conformable at zero minus half. Now combine this with the following relation that beta z e to the q phi of zero and goes as z to the q. Okay. Because beta z, let me remind you, had, a, had this del xi to the minus phi, right? So if you uh, calculate the OP using the, the rules that I gave you, you can easily check that this goes as z to the q. Okay. And gamma z e to the q phi of zero goes as z to the minus q. Okay, because gamma has eta e to the phi. Okay, so that OP gives you z to the minus q. So if you compare this, okay, we see that you get some condition on yeah. what kind of beta n can give you non-zero answer. Okay. Because if, for example, this power okay, becomes less than q, okay, say q minus one, okay, then the corresponding beta n must annihilate this state because if the, uh, if the leading term goes as z to the q. So you cannot have any term of for the form z to the q minus one. Okay. Similarly, here you cannot have any term of the form z to the minus q minus one. Okay. So just by comparing this, these two, you can check 
And again, I'll leave it as an exercise. This is a simple counting. Is that beta n on QK is zero for n greater than or equal to minus Q minus half and gamma n on QK is zero for n greater than or equal to Q plus three half. Okay, so for example, let's suppose that n is equal to q plus 3 half. Okay, let's see what happens. If n is equal to q plus 3 half, okay, then this part here is x to the power minus q minus 3 half plus half. That's minus q minus 1. Okay, that's more singular than what is allowed. Okay, so the corresponding gamma n must annihilate this state. Is this logic clear? Okay, so let me write this again. Okay. So we get this lesson that beta n on QK is zero for n greater than or equal to minus Q minus half and gamma n on QK is zero for n greater than or equal to Q plus three half. Okay. And I should also just point out exercise that beta n, the n that in this expansion, n is integer plus half for q integer and n is integer for q belongs to integer plus half. Okay. And that essentially follows because of this uh, extra minus three half and half. Okay, so if n is integer, this expansion becomes integer plus half and vice versa. Okay, now using this, It follows that unless Q takes one of these three values, minus half, minus one, or minus three half, there is at least one positive n such that beta n on q k non zero or gamma n on q k non zero okay this is best checked by examining this formula carefully but i'll just give an example so example suppose you take q equal to zero then this tells us that beta n on 0 k is 0 for n greater than or equal to minus half and gamma n on 0 k equal to 0 for n greater than or equal to 3 half. Okay. Now for q equal to 0, okay, it's integer, so n is integer plus half. So you see that gamma half on zero k is non zero. Okay, so positive bond doesn't annihilate this. So this is something that you are familiar with. For example, C1 acting on the vacuum is not zero. But here there is a difference because gamma is a bosonic oscillator. It's bosonic. Okay. So, gamma half to arbitrary power on 0k is also not equal to 0. Okay. But what it does, the application of gamma half to the m, this one 
again, these are levels and exercise. This one reduces L0 eigenvalue by M. Sorry, by half M. Okay. Each application of gamma half okay, essentially takes L0 to L0 minus half. Okay. Of course, you cannot apply a single gamma half because that will destroy the GSO projection. Okay. But you can apply it in pairs. Okay. And if you apply M times, okay, you reduce the L0 eigenvalue by half. Okay. So this essentially tells us that in such cases, so in such cases, the spectrum of L0 is unbounded from below. Okay. This is avoided only for the special cases. Okay, you can check that in these cases, okay, that is, uh, this problem doesn't exist. Okay. Q equal to minus one is the best case because they are only the positive modes, uh, only the negative modes uh, give non zero result. Okay. For Q equal to minus three, three half and minus three half, there is still some issue in the sense that there is a zero mode, okay, which doesn't annihilate either a beta zero mode or a gamma zero mode. So while you cannot reduce L0 eigenvalue, okay, at the same L0 eigenvalue, we can create yeah. infinite number of states. Okay. So it's a less serious problem, but it's still a problem. And But all of these problems are resolved yeah. in strength field theory. Okay. But this, I, let me just say at this stage itself, that this is a reason okay, why while yeah. deciding on as to which states are allowed string states, Okay, allowed states of the string, we restrict to Q equal to minus half and minus one. Other questions? Okay. So now we are still in CFT, not quite in string theory at this stage. So let's consider the effect of plumbing fixture. So Plumbing fixture is you just take W W prime equal to minus Q, right? Identify the local coordinates of two punctures by this relation. Okay. And as we have seen that this inserts, this is a general property of CFT, right? Whether it's uh, uh, bosonic or formionic, it doesn't matter. Okay. It will insert the following in the correlation function. Okay, now let's suppose that this one has picture number P. Okay, let's suppose that this one has picture number P. Okay. So if this one has picture number P, this is the conjugate state. So this must have picture number minus two minus P. Because you remember on a sphere, the two point function is non-zero if the picture number adds up to minus two. Okay, so the, because this is a conjugate state, it better be that the sum of the two is minus two minus P. Then we see that because this is an inner product, it's non-zero only if this one has picture number P. And if this one has picture number P, this one must have picture number minus two minus P. Okay. So now let's consider two different, different cases. First one, when you so punctures are two different surfaces. Okay, doesn't matter if it's a sphere or torus or anything. Okay, you can put some genus, doesn't matter. 
So let's suppose that we have sort them by this w w prime equal to minus q less. Okay. So in this case, okay, what you can say is that this has picture number p, this one has picture number minus two minus p. Okay. But in fact, we have no choice in this case as to what the picture, what picture number state you should choose, okay, because the picture number of this is determined by the picture number of the rest. So picture number of this. is determined by the rest of the vortex operator. And the genus. Okay, because on a genus G surface, the total picture number has to be 2G minus 2. Okay. So once you have put the picture numbers of this, you just add up everything and you find that this is, you find what about the picture number of this should be. Okay. So it's fixed. Okay. On both sides, it's fixed and it better be that they are related by this, otherwise the result will be zero. Okay. But the more interesting case is the one where you saw two punctures on the same Riemann surface. So now suppose that we have for them. Okay. So now if this one has P, this one will have minus two minus P by this counting. But you see that the sum of the two is minus two. Okay. So whatever P is, okay, these two always add up to minus two. Okay. So this means that P is not determined by picture number conservation. So what should we do here? So the naive guess. will be to sum over p. Okay, you have to have, in, have a completeness, so you have to sum over all possible picture numbers. In actual practice, we have to fix p. Okay. This is a peculiarity, peculiarity of this beta gamma uh, uh, CFT. Okay. And this has to do with the fact that in terms of beta gamma, we didn't have any picture number to begin with. Right? Beta and gamma have zero picture number. Okay. Picture number entered the uh, game because of the bosonization. Okay. If you had worked with beta gamma system, you would never have known about picture number. Okay. And somehow that essentially gets reflected in this okay. that to get the correct correlation function on this uh, combined surface, okay, we have to sum over only a fixed p. Okay. Given this, we can ask which p. Okay. So what value of p should we choose? The answer turns out to be any one, any value. Okay. But this answer is a somewhat formal answer, and I'll explain why. Okay. Formally, you can choose any value of p, and that will work. Okay. All p give the same answer. Okay, so you fix your p. Okay. Now, the reason that this is formal okay, is because if you remember. 
that we have unbounded spectrum. From below. Okay. So this Q to the HR, okay, Q bar doesn't matter. In heterotic string theory, Q bar makes a difference because the picture number, this problem appears only in the holomorphic sector. Okay. So this Q to the HR, okay, this factor, this HR can become arbitrarily negative. So it's not clear what is the, um, the sum over R doing, right? Because uh, Q is supposed to be a small number okay? and you are summing over um, uh, this Q to the HS, maybe I write it as HS, but it's the same as HR. Okay? So it can become arbitrary negative, okay? So it's not clear what you mean by sum over S. So the way one has to interpret it formally is by uh, uh, some kind of analytic continuation. Okay. So you have to make sense of this by analytic continuation. Okay. And that is that is if you have some sum like this, for example. Okay. This sum makes no sense when Q is small, okay. but nevertheless, we can formally sum it and write it as 1 over 1 minus Q inverse, okay, which is minus Q over 1 minus Q, okay, and make sense of this sum. Okay. So it's only by thinking of this sum over S formally that you can make sense of what this answer is. Okay. But once you adopt that, that convention, Okay. We can show that the NEP gives the same answer. Okay. And clearly in this case, P equal to minus one does not have this problem. There the formal sum is actually a convergent sum. Okay. P equal to minus half and minus three half. have mild problems. Due to essentially other beta zero or gamma zero doesn't annihilate the vacuum. Okay. But this is cleverly taken care of by in strength theory. And we'll see in strength theory. Okay, and we'll see how this is done. So, so far, basically we have analyzed CFT correlation functions. Okay. But this already gives you a motivation as to why P equal to minus one and P equal to minus half are spatial. Okay, from this perspective, minus half and minus three half are both spatial. Okay, but at least you can get some idea of why we want to restrict uh, string fields to be within this class. Other questions? Okay, now let me make another point about heterogeneous amplitudes. high loop amplitudes. And that is that we have to sum over spin structure. And this means that we have to sum over periodic and anti-periodic boundary condition. On beta gamma psi mu 
along different cycles, different non-contractable cycles. So if you are having a torus, for example, then it has two non -con independent non-contractable cycles. Okay, so let me draw this. So one is here, okay, and the other one is this one. Okay. So on this beta gamma cycle, you put periodic boundary condition and anti-periodic boundary condition, condition along these cycles, and also periodic and anti-periodic boundary condition along these cycles. And the physical reason for this okay, this can be understood from using again the plumbing fixture picture. Okay. So imagine that we have constructed this torus by taking a sphere with say three punctures and then showing two of the punctures to each other. In this showing, this could be either NS or R. If this is NS, this has also has to be NS. If this is R, this has to be R, right? Because otherwise, the inner product just vanishes. Okay. So this can be either NS or R. Okay. And this means that this corresponds to anti-periodic or periodic boundary condition. along the mod w equal to mod q to the half circle. Okay, and that of course becomes one of the non-contractable cycles in the on the torus. Okay. And similar justification can be given for this. Okay. So the fact that you have to sum over spin structure is not uh, unrelated to the fact that you have both Ramon and Nebuchadnezzar states. The fact that in a propagator, you can have both Ramon sector propagating and Nebuchadnezzar sector propagating okay. reflects itself okay. in the fact that you have to sum over all possible boundary conditions. Is this clear? So in the following, I'm not going to write down the sum of what's been structured explicitly, okay. but let me just say where it will be encoded. Okay. So we'll define M G M N as the moduli space of Riemann surface. Of genus G with MNS and N Ramon function. Now, if you are dealing with type 2, then you have to have four levels, right? Because there are NS, NS, NSR, RNS, and RR, right? So that's why. Heterotic is it's just simpler to write this. Okay. Now, locally, this MGMN really is MG and M plus N, right? It doesn't matter which are, whether a given puncture is Ramon or Nebu Swartz. Okay. But globally, it turns out that there is some subtle difference. So I write this MGMN. Okay. And then when I write something like integral over MGMN, okay, this will include. Some of our spin structure. So I'm not going to write down separately the sum of our spin structure in the various formulae that I'm going to write down. Are there questions?
Okay, so now let me start with to go, let me go to string amplitudes. So for this, we need to integrate something. over this moduli space. But what is this something? Okay, that's what we are after. Now it turns out that we can take two possible approaches. Okay, so let me just write down what those are and then I'll focus on one of them. So the first one is to make world sheet supersymmetry. as manifest as possible. And this lead to a, leads to a formalism, which is called the supermodular space. So what is supermodular space? Here, what happens is that besides the usual bosonic coordinates. Of MGMN, we have a set of Grassmann odd variables. So these are what are called the supermoduli. And the number depends on G, M, and N. Okay, we'll see this number indirectly uh, later. Okay. So here is you see the difference between Ramon and Nebuchadnezzar's punctures. Okay, they depend separately on M and N but not just on M plus N. Okay. So the idea is that you try to formulate this as a integral over both bosonic variables as well as the formonic variables. Okay, and try to construct the integral. Okay. This certainly is more geometric, but this has not been developed to the extent that the other one has been developed. So I'm going to describe the other one. Okay. Now, in principle, the other one can be related to this, okay, although it has never been achieved from first principle, but let me just say what the formal relation is. So the second approach is that we just carry out the integration. over the Grassmann odd moduli explicitly. Okay. So this can be done, done locally in patches of MGMN. Okay. And essentially what it does, okay, it essentially leads to insertion of picture changing operators on the wall sheet on the Riemann surface. Okay. 
so which you can write as product or alpha chi of y alpha okay y alpha the locations of the picture changing operators okay the number of alphas so alpha runs from one to to the number of picture changing operators is okay we can figure out how many number of picture changing operators are okay so let's say k so to figure out what the value of k should be okay we have to use a picture number conservation okay so the k picture changing operators will have a picture number k each has picture number one then we have m nabu nabu schwartz vortices okay so m times minus one plus n times minus half okay. so this should be equal to g minus two okay. this means that k the number of pcos so let's say call alpha equal to one to k should be equal to two g minus two plus m plus n by two Okay. And these are the number of odd moduli, number of odd supermoduli, where each supermoduli integral is supposed to bring down one power one uh, uh, PCO. Is this clear? Okay. Now I have not told you who, what these y alphas are. Right? These are some. Points on the Riemann surface. Okay. So it turns out that the choice of y alpha corresponds to choice of some gauge. Okay. And this gauge choice breaks down. Okay, and that's why we'll see this. This will probably see in the next um, lecture that we have to keep changing the positions of y alpha. Okay, we cannot just take the same y alphas everywhere on the Riemann surface. Okay, are there questions? Okay, so now we are going to construct. The amplitude. Okay. So to do that, we have to find the analog of this omega that we had introduced, okay. and this will be a function of all the states. So v on to v m. These are the Nebel-Schwarz vortex operators. And let's call them W one to W n. These are the Raman sector vortex operators. Okay, so this should be a P form. Okay, in that in an appropriate version of this P G M n that I introduced. Okay. And you have to find what this is. You have to construct this. Okay, and the guideline for constructing this will be again various consistency conditions. So let's proceed. Okay. So first step. As in bosonic string theory, we introduce m plus n disks. D A with coordinate W A then two G minus two plus M plus N spheres S I with coordinate Z I okay. and Three G minus three plus two times m plus n circles C S, okay, which basically give the interface of the uh, uh, 
the boundaries between SI and DA or between SI and SJ. And we have to have, we have some transition function which is sigma s equal to f s of tau s. The, so this this is the same as in boson extra theory. Okay. The extra ingredient okay. we have to specify locations. Y alpha of 2G minus 2 plus M plus N by 2 PCOs. Okay. These could be either on the disks or on the spheres. Okay. But we will use the convention okay, that we take this to be in WA coordinate. if on da okay, and in zi coordinate if on si <coughs> which means that if i talk about y alpha okay if the alpha is punctured is on the disk da the y alpha is the coordinate in w a coordinate system okay. if the alpha is punctured is on si then y alpha is a coordinate in the zi coordinate system. Okay. It's natural, but that's what you have to choose. Are there questions so far? Okay, then third step is to introduce the fiber bundle EGML. So here there is again, there is a difference. So this is MGMN as usual. So this includes spin structure information. Here earlier there is local coordinate information. at punctures. The additional information that we will include here is the PCO locations. Okay. So this will be part of the fiber coordinate. So let's suppose that TM is a coordinate on PGMN. Okay, of course, it's infinite dimensional. Okay, so this infinite dimensional coordinate system. Okay. Then this means that we have sigma s, this function okay, will now depend on T because different t will correspond to different functions okay. and the y alpha will also depend on t. right because different t will correspond to different choice of y alpha typically okay. so either this differs or this differs or even maybe both differ when you change t okay. so now we have to define the analog of bm So part of it will be this identical to what we had for the bosonic string. So let me write it. So this bar is only over the numerator. The numerator is still TM.
Okay. Xi is that a, 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 a Form one field that we got from the by boson X in the beta gamma. So remember that beta gamma got traded in by xi eta phi. This is that xi. Okay. So this is the extra term. This is the extra term. Okay. Now the peculiar pro property of this extra term seems to be this one over chi, right? What uh, when we have not defined one over chi. Chi is just a local operator, right? So one over chi doesn't make sense. Okay. So this is formal. We'll see that this basically will go out. Okay, it will cancel against something else. So this is just formal. Write it for now. Just accept that this is written formally. Okay. We'll see after you put it inside a correlation function. If there's a one over chi left over, then you are in trouble. Are there questions? Okay, so now let me write down the formula for omega. Maybe I use a different color. So this is the P form on omega on, on PGMN that we construct. Now you see that here you have this product over all the picture changing operators. Okay. So what happens is that if when you put in the this BOBM1 to BMP, okay, then these things you can first of all convince yourself that this can appear for a given alpha, this chi y alpha can appear at most once. Okay, because this will be anti-symmetric when you put two of them together. Okay, and you will vanish. So that because it appears at least one, at most once, okay, it will get cancelled by the corresponding chi factor line. So that's the way you should interpret this formula. Okay. So this once you expand this out, this is a completely well-defined formula. Are there questions? Now this looks like a complicated formula, right? So why, how did we arrive at this? And the short answer is that this one satisfies the identity that was so important for us. Okay, so these terms basically correspond to QB acting in turn and with this minus one to the V factors picked up. This is minus one to the P B omega and as you know that this one, this identity is essential to show the section independence. So now the amplitude I can now write down. So A V on to V N V M W one to W N will be this G S factor. Oh, I should have also written some 
minus two pi i factors. Okay, so let me write it here. It's times minus two pi i times minus three g minus three plus m plus n. Okay, it's the same kind of factor that we had in the case of Bose Hardik strip theory. So here you have also this GS factor, GS to the power 3G minus 3 plus M plus N. And then integral over S GMN of omega GMN 3G 6G minus 6. So this is exactly the same structure as in the case of bosonic strip. And as I said, once you write this, then it has all the nice properties. So this is a section of PGMN, which means it basically can be written as an integral over MGMN by pulling back. And the point is that once you have written it this way, okay, then as a consequence of this, you can show first of all that it's independent of the section the pure gauge states decouple and so on. Okay, all those proofs go through exactly as before. Is this clear? Are there questions? So once we have gotten this, We can now express the amplitude as sum over Feynman diagrams. The procedure is the same as in bosonic string theory. But with one difference. Okay. And I'll explain this and then I'm going to stop. Okay. Now, I should have also said that this prescription in principle, one should be able to derive by starting from the supermodular integral okay, and then doing the Grassmann or integra integration over the Grassmann or variables explicitly. Okay. But this has not been shown from first principle. I should say, certainly we have some idea, right? It uh, does work to some extent, okay? But the full procedure has not been established from the first, from first principles. Okay, so let me explain what is the difference. So consider this plumbing fixture. And this inserts, now we are doing also the integrals. Okay, so this will in insert integral dq, h dq bar, and then phi rc, b0, b0 bar, phi sc, q to the hs, you work to the HS part. Okay, this is the this is the same as in what you had in boson extreme theory. This is phi r and phi s. Okay, so you interpret this as a propagator joining two vertices coming out of Feynman diagram. 
Now, if these are NS punctures, so for NS punctures, phi r and phi s have picture number equal to minus one. So this implies that phi r c and phi s c have picture number minus one okay, and everything is fine. Okay, so this is perfectly okay because it's non-zero. Now let's look at the Ramon puncture. So here, phi r and phi s have p equal to minus half. Why? Because now that we are doing string field theory, uh, we are doing string theory. Okay, we have already declared that the states of string theory are picture number minus half states in the CFT. Okay? So you have no option but to change uh, pick phi r and phi s to have p equal to minus half. But now you see there is a problem because this implies that phi r c and phi s c have p equal to minus three half. Okay. So we don't get picture number conservation. If, if this is minus three half and this is minus three half, the total is minus three. Okay. So this means that we that this matrix element phi r c b0 b0 bar phi s c will vanish. Okay. So to avoid this, okay, we avoid this. By inserting one picture changing operator, one PCO inside this, inside this matrix element. Okay, in what form we insert it, I'm going to describe in the next slide. But is this procedure clear? Because then minus three up plus minus three up plus one will add up to minus two, which is the correct number. So what we insert, we insert a particular combination of the PCO, chi zero, which is integral dW by W, chi W. Okay. So this means that this is like an average of PCO insertions. On a circle. Okay. So roughly what it means is the following. Okay. So I said that to pick SGM, SGML, okay, we specify this. I mean, let's look at this picture. So if you take if you take PGMN, okay. then Specifying a section okay, means that you are specifying both the local coordinates as well as the PCO locations as, as a function of MGM. Okay. Now, what this is saying is that near degeneration, okay, when Q is small, okay, so this specifies local coordinates and PCO locations. Now, what this condition tells us is that the section that you choose okay, has to have some special property near the boundary, okay, namely that if the two Ramon punctures which are being sold, okay, if that if that is the kind of boundary that you are considering, okay, then one of the PCOs must be inserted on the neck. One of the PCOs must be inserted on the neck, okay, where you are sewing them together. Furthermore, 
it has to be inserted not as a single object okay, but an average of many insertions okay. so one pco pco insertion is average of all possible insertions on mod w equal to q to the half circle okay. so next time we'll see some example of this okay and maybe that will make things a little more clearer but i think today my time is already up so i'll stop here and ask for questions So are there so, questions? There are questions. Well, I, I wanted to ask whether it is possible to make a uh, different choice of um, central chart when uh, talking about uh, I think your voice is getting cut. Can you? Yeah, you have to use the one, this other one. I wanted to ask when uh, you, you talked about uh, heterotic string theory, you assume that uh, we take 10 uh, bosons and then we add a CFT having a central charge 16 and 0. I wondered if uh, it's possible to make a different choice and still have a, a a theory, a CFT that uh, makes sense. The point is, you need this QB square equal to zero condition, right? So, if you don't have the beta gamma ghost, okay. the central charge has to add up to 26. Otherwise, you will violate the QB square equal to zero condition. Uh, so, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't, it be, wouldn't it be possible to, uh, let's say, take uh, a central charge of uh, 10 and then take 16 uh, free bosons? Then on the supersymmetric side, you have problem, right? The central charge will not match up to uh, zero in that case. Because on the supersymmetric side, you have beta gamma ghosts. Okay. And the beta gamma ghost, as we have seen, gives the total central charge of 11, right? And the psi mu gives d by 2. So, to add, so that on the uh, holomorphic side, if you want the total central charge to vanish, you cannot have 16 x mu's. Okay, I see. Thank you. Other questions? People online? So I I have a question. So this uh, this uh, this choice of inserting X knot uh, on the neck when you glue two Ramon punctures, how much is it uh, really um, obliged uh, choice or is it just uh, an easy choice? Well, actually, it is more or less obliged in the closed string theory because what you need is that it should commute with this B zero B zero bar operator. Oh, I see. And that essentially fixes this choice. Okay, if you take, for example, a chi at a single point inside this, it will not commute with B0, B0 bar. I see. So this is like a single gauge in the string field theory language somehow. Yeah, so here, uh, of course, uh, we are working in single gauge, but even in the gauge invariant port, right, the condition is that it should commute with B0 minus. And that, force, that uh, forces you to have this particular structure. Mm -hmm. So even if you would construct this from string field theory and use another gauge fixing that is not single gauge to define the propagator and do the plumbing fixture with this propagator, then you would still have to use X naught or would you have to use? Yeah, yeah, we have to still use X naught because yes, it, I mean, basically to prove gauge, if we start with the gauge invariant version of string field theory, then to prove gauge invariance, you need this X naught because you need the fact that B0 minus has to commute to them, uh, whatever you are inside. Oh, okay, okay, I see, I see, okay. Yeah, otherwise you break, break gauge invariance. 
Okay. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Um, um, so there are no tachyons in the heterotic string theory, even though there's a bosonic uh, sector. That's right, yes. Because we have this L0 minus equal to zero condition, right? L0 equal to L0 bar. And using that, one can show that uh, basically the having one supersymmetric side uh, removes the tachyon. Oh, I see. Okay. So I remind that there is not going to be the question and answer time this afternoon. So if you have questions, this is the moment. Yeah, uh, I have one more. Um, maybe, yeah, okay. When we are talking about moduli space, we say that it is some finite dimensions, but what are the parameters that we can use as coordinates on, on this? So can we think even of coordinates? And yeah. So locally, it is reasonably well understood. Basically, if you think of, maybe I draw one figure. We had this, uh, uh, this is g equal to 2 and equal to 2, but the general picture is still valid. So we had this uh, So we had, remember we had 3G minus 3 plus, well, I can call it M or M plus N circles, right? CS. <coughs> so on that circle, we wrote down a general relation as sigma is equal to FS of tau S. But of course, this is a lot of, there is a lot of redundancy. Because you can change coordinates, you can make a, a reparameter from the Zs and the Ws if you are not interested in local coordinate. Okay. So locally, at least, you can parameter as a modular space by taking sigma s equal to minus qs over tau s. Okay. Basically, the plumbing fixture kind of variable. Okay. So this gives you altogether 3g minus 3 plus m plus n qs. So this means 6G minus 6 plus 2M plus N real parameters. Okay. And this you can use to level the moduli space. The non-trivial part, which is which requires some understanding. In fact, uh, I mean, there is no really efficient way to do this, okay, is to see what is the range, okay, what, what you should integrate over. So that you don't overcome, right? Because you know that uh, Riemann surfaces have these global mm -hmm. uh, uh, symmetries. Okay. For example, if you have a tail to a torus, you can exchange the two cycles. Okay. And that doesn't give a, a new torus. Okay. So there are a lot of identifications under these global symmetries. And mm -hmm. to understand how, exactly what range of these parameters mm -hmm. uh, give inequivalent Riemann surfaces, that's a much more complicated problem. But locally, if you want to know what coordinates you want to use to label the model space, you can just use this. But can there is be a situation when, for example, one of the coordinates, some kind of uh, winds uh, on the circle and another, yeah, also some do some non-trivial yeah, behavior. Uh, yeah, so you can in fact use, mm -hmm. In the, okay, let me. Yeah, you because have this see. form looks really constrained and it is yeah, just not really. Oh, so there's certainly a lot of freedom, right? Because a lot of the freedom is in the uh, uh, change of coordinates, coordinate system, right? Okay? I've just given you one. Okay? But you could, for example, use this. You could use this. 
on when you have the intersection of two spheres okay? and then something like uh, sigma s equal to tau s plus a s on si intersection dn okay? again a s is two complex parameter or two real parameter okay? so as far as parameter counting is concerned it gives us exactly the same uh, set of uh, variables right? so there is a lot of freedom in labeling the model i suppose okay? you basically need these very parameters right and unless you are unlucky that uh, you have chosen the parameters in such a way that varying the parameters actually can be removed by uh, coordinate definition any choice of para such uh, parameter any parameterization of this kind is good enough as far as uh, local region is concerned so it's by no means uh, this is a unique choice does this answer your question yeah yeah i guess in some sense yeah <laughs> maybe i just need to think of it a little bit more yeah okay thank you yeah so it's basically that you, have, you want to introduce these many parameters and you can do it in many different ways right through these functions 